Hello, my name is Jay Leslie, and I'm happy to be the one to demonstrate the capabilities of OnePager Pro and Express for you today. Just in case you're looking for something specific, here is how the video is structured. First, I'd like to introduce what OnePager is and the problem it solves. From there, I'll show you the basic data you'll need in either Microsoft Excel or Project to create a visual in OnePager. Then I'll cover some of the main features of the application, including drag and drop movements, formatting of shape properties, swim lanes, rows, and color, conditional formatting, sharing your visuals, display of what we call decorations, which is essentially text or visual indicators, using your source files to update your one-pager visuals, and finally, how to make and share templates. So what is one-pager and what is it for? To answer that in a way that makes the most sense, I'm going to tell the story of how I came to find one-pager. Prior to coming to work for Chronicle Graphics, the makers of OnePager, I was actually a project manager by trade for about 14 years. Now, this was something I used to do quite a lot. Dragging shapes around in PowerPoint or Visio to create reports. Why? Because I couldn't get what I needed any other way. I just had to. I had tried what was available in Project or Primavera, but those reports just didn't cut it. Those tools are very good at helping manage the data of our initiatives, but unfortunately they just did not allow me to create the specific communications pieces I needed. This worked, and I actually got very good at it, but the problem is it's just way too inefficient, and it never occurred to me that someone may have developed a tool to generate these visuals for me using the data I already had. One pager allowed that, to take the data I had in Microsoft Project or Excel and turn that into the reports I needed. It was a significant time saver, it empowered me as a competent communicator, and not to mention saved my company money and added a great deal of value to the organization in which I was working. OnePager, though, is not an all-encompassing planning tool. We focus on the visual. It's a great addition to any project management or PPM tool out there to help improve the quality and clarity of communications and to make the process of creating those communications as efficient as possible. Okay, on to the demo. On my screen, I have a sample file open in Microsoft Project 2013. OnePager works with Project or Excel 2013 back to 2003, so you shouldn't have any versioning issues. The two buttons that come with your OnePager download, once installed, will be in your Add-ins tab. Your Source Project or Excel file, at a minimum, should include Task Name, Start Date, and Finish Date. But you can pull in other columns like Resource Names, other text columns, Enterprise custom fields if you're using Microsoft Project Server, baselines, WBS codes, just about any column from your project or Excel file to use for display or organization in one pager. If you want to be choosy about the tasks and milestones you're pulling into your visual, add a flag column to your document. You can add a flag column by right-clicking into any column header, selecting Insert Column, and then when you hit your F key, you'll see the flag columns you have available. Any flag column will do. Once your flag column is present, put a yes value next to the activities and milestones you want in your chart. Keep in mind that you are not limited to just one column of yes values. You can add as many columns to your project or Excel file with different combinations of yeses to create charts that will fulfill the needs of different conversations or presentations that may occur over the lifetime of your initiative. So, once you have finished with your selection, you can hit the One Pager Pro button on your Add-ins tab to launch the application. The initial form that comes up will allow you to create a new, open existing, or update an existing one-pager document, which we refer to as a project view. You're going to hear me say view, visual, and chart interchangeably throughout the demonstration, and with those terms I'm speaking of the one-pager visual files themselves. We want to make a new view, so we'll click New. With the next form, the first thing I need to do is select a template. A template tells OnePager how you want your view to appear in terms of formatting, organization, and also which columns from your project or Excel file you'll want to pull in. We provide you a base set of templates that you can choose based on their description to get started, but you will eventually make your own templates, which is very easy to do, and I'll cover templates more as we get further. Next, I'm going to give my view a title, which I can change later and prior to saving. The Task Selection section is where I will tell OnePager which flag column I've used as a designator. You can select all tasks if you want, but I'm trying to create a roll-up example versus a wall chart, so I'm going to stick with my flag column selection. Finally, the snapshot date is meant to represent the moment in time I'm trying to illustrate. In the example here, I'm going to choose today's date, and then click Create New Project View. 
The initial result is a combination of the data I put a yes value next to in my flag column and what the settings in my template told OnePager to do. All right, let me flip over to Excel now and show you how this works there with OnePager Express. Again, Express is not a trimmed down version of OnePager Pro as the name might suggest. It just works with Excel instead. The basic data you need in your source file in Excel is the same as project. You need a task name, a start date, and a finish date at a bare minimum. However, a unique ID will help OnePager recognize each activity or milestone during updates, and a column with yes values will allow you to be selective about what you're pulling into your view, similar to the flag column in project. If you have other columns in your data that you'd like to map into your OnePager file, that's easy to do. When you've got your yes values in place, you can click the OnePager Express button on your add-ins tab in Excel to launch OnePager. The first two pages are the same in OnePager Express as they are in OnePager Pro. Click New, select the template you desire, add a title, ensure the column with your yes values is showing in the task selection drop-down, and finally choose your snapshot date. From here, you will hit Next. This page is where you will confirm certain column mappings for one pager. The three mandatory columns are noted by asterisks. However, our Excel file has other data attributes, so we'll keep them mapped in the below cells. In your case, you may need to hit the drop downs and make certain corrections. To do that, just hit the drop down arrow and make whatever changes you need. When you think you're set, click Create New Project View. Since OnePager Pro and Express essentially have the same features once your chart is rendered and you're in the OnePager application, we'll continue the demonstration in this example. Now, chances are that your first results might not look quite as pretty as mine, but that's okay. It's part of the learning process. It just means that your template wasn't exactly right for your data, or it just might not be what you're looking for. Just about everything in the visual is something that you can modify to get what you need prior to presentation drag and drop. Almost all of the visual elements in the chart can be dragged and dropped for the purposes of movement or resizing with a left click and hold. There is one main exception to this and that is while you can drag one or more shapes up and down in the view, you cannot move them left and right and that is by design. If your dates are off, you have to go back to your source file, make changes, and then ask one pager for a quick update. It's a simple process and I'll cover that further in the demonstration. You can move the legend around. You can move rows and swim lanes up and down for reordering on the fly. You can adjust the swim lane or row column widths as well by clicking on the right hand border of those columns. The width and height dimensions on the document are also something that you can change with a click on the right or bottom border of the view as needed. Finally, all shapes will show handlebars on them if selected, which will allow you to resize them as you need to. Formatting of shapes. The shape formats in your view are modifiable for one, many, or all markers at once. To change the formatting properties for all of the shapes in your project view, click the Project View Properties button on your Home tab here and navigate to either the Taskbars or Milestones tabs. Each setting in here will change the global settings for the shape that you are modifying. To change the formatting on one or more shapes independently of the global settings and the properties of the project view, select what you want using left clicks with a control key if you want to select more than one, or using a lasso, and then when your selection is complete, you can use the formatting options up on your home tab of the ribbon for things like color and font changes, or you can click the format button on the home tab. This will open the change marker properties box. In this box, you will have much more detailed control of the formatting of the selected shapes. There are many shapes, fills, and colors to choose from. Height, and border formatting are also within your control. Swim lanes, rows, and color. One pager can group your tasks and milestones into swim lanes using any column of data in your source file. Right now, I see mine are grouped by my resource names column. I also have an additional column displayed called the rows column. To change what columns for my source file are driving the display in my swim lanes and rows in one pager, I click into the project view properties again and then go to the rows and swim lanes tab. There's a lot of flexibility in this tab, but we're going to look at two settings that you will use most often. This drop-down will allow you to change what column is driving your swim lane organization. This will control what is displaying in your rows column. The checkboxes here will allow you to turn the columns on or off within your project view. One pager can also color your tasks based on values in one of your source file columns. 
To modify what column is controlling the coloring of your markers, go to the Task Bars or Milestones tabs. There is a setting on the right side that is duplicated on both of those tabs called Gantt Bar Milestone Fill Color. You can choose to color everything one color or use a column from your source file. In our example, we're again using the Resource Names column. This will also control what you see populated in your legend. But the legend has its own settings that can be accessed with a right click or by opening the Project View Properties form and visiting the Legend tab. Conditional Formatting Beyond swim lanes, rows, and colors is another level of specificity in formatting using conditional formatting. If you click into the Project View Properties, then go to the Task Bars or Milestones tab, there is a button at the bottom that will allow you to create or modify conditional formatting rules. If you want a specific value in a column to always make your shape look a certain way, this is the way to do it. This is all controlled by drop-down, so you don't have to worry about writing formulas. Just choose a column, operator, and value that you want to use to drive conditional formatting. Color, shape, height, borders, and font are all properties that you can make look like you want them to look based on a particular value. Sharing the output of your chart. To get your visual out of one pager and ready to share, there are a couple of different methods. First, you can click on the Copy button at the far left of your Home tab on the Ribbon toolbar. This will put a high-resolution image on your clipboard that you can then paste with a Control v into any other document or an email. The next method is to save your file as an image, which you can accomplish by clicking File, then Save As. When your Windows Explorer pops, simply select your preferred image file type below the file name cell in the drop-down and choose the folder on your network or hard drive where you'd like to store the image. Decorations. In this example, I also have several visual elements in the body of my chart set to display. You see some yellow bars meant to denote percent complete visually, red bars meant to illustrate critical path, and also some smaller, more transparent bars on the left and underneath the larger bars, which are showing my baselines. I have full control over percent complete and critical path in terms of color and height within the taskbar, and even more control over the baselines. All of those items are something that you can turn on and off with a few clicks for the entire view, as well as on an individual or group basis. Here are some tasks down below that have these elements turned off. There is also quite a bit of data that I'm not displaying on most of my tasks, but do have a couple tasks set up to illustrate some of the options. In this task, I'm displaying my baseline end dates, and I have percent complete progress text set to show. In this task, I've turned on the start and end dates and set them to display on the top and bottom. Updates. One of the best things about OnePager is that it allows you to set up a visual for a recurring meeting and then simply use the source file to adjust the chart whenever your next iteration of that meeting occurs. There are two standard ways to update your visuals in OnePager, and they are by adding a snapshot to a project view or by replacing an existing snapshot. First, let's pretend that we've just presented this visual in front of us to an audience that we know we'll have to present to each week for the next several weeks. Now a week is going to go by and some change is going to be inflicted upon my source file. Now it's a week later and I need to walk into my weekly meeting with an updated visual. First, I'm going to click my one pager button. Then I'm going to click update. Here I can select to make a new snapshot or replace the snapshot I have. I'm going to create a new snapshot, then select the date of my meeting, which is a week later, and click New. OnePager is going to pull in a fresh set of data from my source file and present me a new snapshot. If I navigate to my View tab, I can now see that I have a blue Previous button illuminated up here in my Snapshot Navigation buttons, which, if clicked, will allow me to step back from the more recent snapshot to the previous snapshot, and I can see some movement on the screen, which is indicative of the change that has occurred from one week to the next, kind of like a movie or slideshow. This allows you to collect a cataloged history for how your plan has evolved over time. There's no limit to the amount of snapshots you can create, and you can manage your snapshot dates or delete unwanted snapshots if needed. If you like this feature, it's there, but you don't have to use it. As noted, you can always use one snapshot and constantly click the Replace option whenever you go to conduct the update. The Insert tab allows you to add content to any or all snapshots to let them stand a little more on their own. Text boxes, images, links to illustrate dependencies, 
Curtains and comment boxes can all add context if a voiceover explanation isn't an option. Templates. As a new user, you're going to spend time making some changes to the settings in your one pager chart in order to best accommodate your audience needs and your data. You're going to get to the point where you say, ah, that's what I want my visuals to look like the next time I create a one pager project view. When you get to that point, what you want to do is take the settings that are driving this visual and commit them back to a template. To do that, click the button just to the right of the Project View Properties button that says Copy to Template. A Windows Explorer window will pop allowing you to save these settings in a new template that you can then employ when you go to make a new one pager. If I click back to Project now, then click my one pager button and then New, you can see that one pager is assuming by default that I want to use the template I just created. You will soon build up a library of templates that will get you close to, if not exactly, what you want when you go to create a new project view. This library can also be centrally stored to allow your team or organization a base level of standardization. If you ever want to share a template with somebody, just throw it in an email or put it on a shared folder and they can access it that way. There are so many more features and settings to explore in OnePager and we urge you to check them out by visiting our other short videos at chroniclegraphics.com forward slash support. You can also call us at the number shown or email us at support at chroniclegraphics.com or sales at chroniclegraphics.com and we'll be happy to assist you.